Mastering can be an intimidating process, but in this clip, Joey and Nick break down exactly what they have on their instrumental and master bus and how all the individual processes complement each other to create a huge sounding mix. Check it out and enjoy. All right, so last thing to go over is the instrumental bus and the master bus. We'll start with the instrumental bus. We showed track spacer in the yeah, beginning. That's the everything that you want the drums to like negate is being sent to the instrumental bus. But we try not to ever make the vocals get affected by the blips because it sounds weird. Yeah, because and then the vocals are going to be like negating the instrumental like a hair. So then uh, we have a little bit of a gain adjustment on the two just to get the levels right. Basically, so it hits this. We want to hit this at a certain level, this yeah, plug-in here. Right here. Yeah, and it's too loud, so there's some pre-gain going down on that channel. Again, hate faders, so instead of turning the fader down, which actually wouldn't be the same thing, but hmm. you could, couldn't you turn this fader down? Oh, yeah, you could. So you could turn this blue fader on track space, you could turn that down negative 12, but then it would look ugly, yeah. so <laughs> we wouldn't do that. Right. We use the pre-gain, because it's hidden, so it's, it's away, you can't yeah. tell that it's happening. Yeah, when you close it, it just looks so much more neat. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're the same thing, it doesn't yeah. matter, guys. That goes in the track spacer, then track spacer goes in the virtual mix rack, Yeah. and we're looking at that. Or, yeah, no, this yeah this is just a little bit of top end like sheen add a little bit of sheen to the whole mix mm -hmm. uh what frequency is that at 12k okay and i think it's just like two cool it's very no soft. other moves on that plugin nope and we like that one because it's soft sometimes in that same spot instead of using an eq i might use an exciter yeah because uh exciters can often sound a little better than eq boost then it goes into um fg gray yeah you can play the drum mix so To me, the mix falls apart when that turns off. So that's doing a lot. Just a, obviously it's a bus compressor and it's kind of at the end of the, almost at the very end of the mix, right? It's on the instrumental bus. It's like affecting everything, but it's great because it, it feels like it really pulls it all together. Mm -hmm. So it's just acting as a really nice bus compressor. Then it goes from FG Gray into this exciter, like preamp kind of looking plug-in thing. Yeah. Not a compressor, right? No. Yeah. It's just like analog warmth. And this is a newer one. I, I'm not too hip to this, but this is something that Nick has been playing around with. I like it. <laughs> yeah, again, it's that analog mojo stuff. Get add some thump, add some warmth, kind of glues it, saturates yeah. it. Like more and more of that, we're finding we need in the mix because you know without it, it just kind of sounds like a bunch of uh, a little flat. It sounds a little flat, yeah. So from there, we take the instrumental bus and we put it into the master bus, and then we have a little bit of a uh, looks like a one dB boost. That was probably a, a post yeah. mix decision where you're like, okay, everything's good, but I just need to push it one more dB. Yeah, because you're just looking for this meter. To be floating trying to get the meter in the sweet spot which we'd like it to float probably just a little more but yeah yeah we need, actually needed to turn it up because this mix is a slightly different than the actual mix session so just because we had to print stems for you guys yeah and we wanted to show you the mix based on the stems right and then the attack is at 30 milliseconds ratio at four release at 0.1 i pretty much never change those settings yeah. ever just the settings that work and then max bass is always next and bypass it yeah This just takes your mace, literally all that's happening in this plugin is takes your bass mix, copies it to upper frequencies with harmonics and adds compression. And I love that plugin. It's almost always on my master bus. <laughs> If you hear this on like a laptop or iPhone or earbuds or whatever, you're going to hear the low end. Yeah, it's great for that. I think it was that negative. It also makes it a little wider in my experience and a little bit softer, especially in like the low end. It has a way of kind of just adding a certain stereo width to the bottom end of the mix under, say, 200 hertz. That just sounds great. Then it goes into linear MB, linear phase multiband is basically a multiband compressor that is linear phase. Uh, some multiband compressor 
compressors can push elements out of phase. And when you're at the mastering stage, which is the master bus, you don't want to be doing anything that fucks with the phase because you can basically mirror your mix and make it sound like crap. So you want to use like really high end like processors that will do the extra math that's necessary to preserve your audio and make it sound great. Our philosophy with this is to try and control low end and just tame anything that's just kind of getting out of control yeah. now that it's all together and this is the final bus it's like this is your last chance to like kind of get everything in the ballpark of, mm -hmm. of where you want it to sit to do it reactively <laughs> So you notice like when he screams, the purple band goes down, but then like when the kick is going nuts, the red band goes down. So it's just a good way to like get everything to like gel together even more than than like a single bus. Like if you, when you use a bus compressor, it's just a single band. It's all the frequencies at once going up and down in volume and stuff. And this is like handling each individual frequency range separately, which uh, helps like dial it in even further. And you can see those settings there. And uh, by the way, those settings are years and years of trial and error. Right. Just I think the only thing we changed from the last mix was probably the threshold just because there's so much kick going on but yeah that was it yeah because this the way this is set up like as you see it on the screen is you you don't set it and forget it you actually this is a tool now that it's set like this you go in there from mix to mix and you go all right like this mix has a ton of you know 250 hertz like mm -hmm. maybe i'm gonna be changing the attack on that or you know it's a rap song and so i need to mess with the release and the attack setting of the low band because it's like freaking 808s everywhere and like you know you're going to be playing around with these settings you know look on the right hand side where the makeup is manual the adaptive is off the release is auto release control behavior is electro knee is 0.5 lots of experimentation that goes into setting it that way i would suggest if you really want to know what you're doing read the manual learn what all of those individual things mean and what they do and what are the different modes so that you can like even use it further as a tool but we've kind of landed on it set like this at least for the music that we work on and then it's just a matter of changing those thresholds those attack and release settings and that's pretty much it and maybe slight adjustments on the bands themselves you can push things up and down with gain like I noticed you pulled uh, the low mid gain down a little bit. That might have been like post like, OK, mix is perfect, but low mids are a little hot. Let yep. me pull that down one yep. kind of thing. Then it goes into OTT. And somebody earlier was like, <laughs> OTT on the master bus. Really? Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just an excitement thing, mm -hmm. just adding more excitement to the mix. This might have been a thing, too. You can tell me if I'm right. I'm going to guess because I don't know. <laughs> but I did tell Nick, like, we got to make this kick Lauren Shore's ass. Yeah. So maybe he got to this point in the mix and he was like, all right, it still doesn't really kick their ass. Right. And then he put OTT on. Yeah. <laughs> I know uh, Tyler does this, too. Oh, does he? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. There's no rules, guys. Dude, beginning to nail the mix, L1 on everything now, just OTT and everything. <laughs> everything man <laughs> that's that's like the majority of what's happening and then a lot is going on in ozone so we'll open that next yeah so let's yeah, yeah let's do it like this yeah turn everything off and then just add one yeah every four bars or something One thing I want to say about what we just heard, though, is I guarantee you, Nick never. I mean, I yeah. know I've never heard the mix like that, and I'm sure Nick no, never did. No, I've, I've never turned the master off. It's because I'm mixing into it like all the time. <laughs> so I don't know what you might have learned from just hearing that, but we learned nothing <laughs> because we've never heard the song with those things turned off. Right. These go in order from left to right yep. in the top. So there's a little bit of an EQ boost here. Again, this is the very final stage of the master or the mix. Yeah, and this is 1 dB too, so it's it's very touchy. 
Yeah, 1 dB at 1500 hertz, which is kind of almost like a tilt EQ. Mm-hmm. Then goes into a uh, stereo imager. And let's I don't see think what... I'm even doing much here. Okay, yeah. I know why this is. So this is part of our setup is we always oh, yeah. have the stereo imager. And then I think we used to, well, sometimes we still do, is we'll mono out the low end. But it looks like we didn't do that. Yeah, either. I think it's because the guitar tuning was so low. You still want that like stereo. like. Uh, okay, practice. yeah. And it just kind of ruined the mix when it was like clamped. Yeah, and this is one of those things where like, you know, even though it's in our template and even though we always set it that way, we're not scared to be like, oh, rip that out of there. If your gut is telling you what the hell is going on with the low end, this is, this is weird. And then you go in here and you're like, oh, yeah, we have that mono low end thing and you turn it off. You're like, oh, it sounds better. We'll yeah. go with that. Like, And you can probably hear it. It's not super apparent, but yeah. So it just depends on mm. on the song. Yeah. So then we have the exciter, which this is we used to use this because the issue would be you'd get to this point in the master and it would be like it needs a little bit more like I, I want to say the word saturation. But for somebody who doesn't know how to hear that, they wouldn't think that it's almost like when you get to this part, you're like it still doesn't have like um it's like missing like balls or something mm. or it's like missing some kind of like, you know, like powerful punch to it or whatever. Yeah. And that's that's what this is doing. It, it really adds like a nice amount of mid range to the mix like it fills out the mid range it fills in all the gaps it fills in the gaps it's like the best way i can explain it we'll show you what it sounds like on and off <laughs> to really overdo it yeah. boost like the widest range which would be the pink one yeah, yeah. almost has like an opposite effect sometimes yeah. when you get into the nitty gritty of like like the referencing mm. you know like okay i'm gonna listen to this mix okay now I'll listen to my mix sometimes this tape saturation is like all the all the difference mm -hmm. especially in the high end yeah like <laughs> That little point two of high end or, or point five of high end is such a difference on a lot of stuff that I've worked on that I am almost like convinced that it kind of like made everyone want to make their mixes a little bit more have more treble. Mm. To my ears, it sounds like the right amount of treble to add versus not having it. And it, it, this has been in our template for yeah. This is kind of like we said it, forget it, because it's just been it's been the same exact settings. We've had the like, same like you guys can five. watch my other nail the mix is the same settings. Yeah. Exactly. Personally, the same. vouch for like 2000 and what did I meet you? 2008, Joey, 2007, something somewhere back then. You've had this has been in your template since then. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, the way I found it was just like getting into that situation where you're like, all right, the whole mix is great. I don't want to fuck it up, but I need to add more high end and treble alone is not doing it. And I found this and then I trusted it and I used it and it's been a part of the template. Now it's the thing that we don't think about anymore. Okay. Then it goes to impact. Now this is something that is new for us and I don't know anything about it. So I'll <laughs> let Nick talk about it. Okay. So basically it's like a transient designer, but it like lines up to the grid. So it can never like mess up if it reads like an audio form wrong or something. I'll just play it and you can see what it does. And if I hit Delta, you can hear what it's adding. This is anytime that like the mix is slamming in, it's just giving that little extra like push over the edge. Kind of like an active transient designer yeah. kind of situation. But it's to the grid. But it's so, to the grid. Yeah. It's pretty cool. But then we go into the maximizer. I saw somebody saying, why is it plus four in ozone? And I think that's probably because I've had a set like this forever. So just a gain staging thing. Yeah. Just to get the level loud so that it's going through all the processors at that level that you want. We've been using IRC2 for a long time. Sometimes IRC3 and the ceiling is at negative 0.3 because you can occasionally get what they call an overage, which may, means like you'll get a little sample that jumps above negative 0.3. So we don't want it to hit zero. So the only way to do that is to have you have to have a, a 0.3 dB spread, which means the, the highest it will ever jump will be a negative 0.1. Mm. 